Uh, we defined last time, uh, we started this really simplicial complex uh, and uh, we, if I remember correctly, we start when we, we calculated, uh, let, let, okay, let's maybe recall uh, what the notation, uh, we need to find a field FQ, V is FQ to the N, and we took the simplicial complex such that the vertices uh, or if you want x0 is all non-trivial. Non-trivial means neither 0 nor V subspaces of V are. Ah, there are too many Vs. <laughs> so this would be V, the, the space. And we have a tau function, which is a type function for such W, um, so the tau of W is simply the dimension of W, and, uh, we, and um, uh, Xi, the I simplices, is simply all the sets Wi1 inside W, Wi0 inside Wi1 inside W. J0, J1, sorry, up to J i, right? Like a flag of i plus one subspaces is the is the set of i cells, and we and uh, we started to calculate. So we saw that uh, for us, and, and we call we call this x, say it is the spherical n q. This is the flag, and we, we, what we saw, we saw that S3Q is a bipartite graph, bipartite Q plus one regular graph, which is the uh, points versus lines of projective plan, of the projective plan over FQ. And, we comp and the eigenvalues in this case were plus minus Q plus one, and plus, with, uh, each one of them with one multi multi multiplicity, and plus minus square root of Q, uh, each one with very high multiplicity, which we basically can, can calculate. Now, the, 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 the first really interesting and not completely trivial case is the next one. So let's look. I want to compute it. Uh, I mean, I hope that all, all, uh, already today you will understand why the computation of these eigenvalues is important for us. So let's look at S4Q. So S4Q now, this is the, 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 the one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and three-dimensional. Now we have three levels. So this is a, 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 a two-dimensional complex, right? The, the maximal chambers are of length three, and it gives rise to three bipartite graphs. The bipartite graph that B12, B13, and B23. Uh, so this is one against two, this is two against three, which means the subspaces of dimension one against the subspaces of dimension two. And uh, like the, the uh, um, uh, oh, actually, yeah, I, I'm going to compute this even though there will be, later on, we'll, see, we'll, we'll need a different interpretation, but... I'm sorry, yeah, okay. I prepared this, and <laughs> I didn't think, now I see that if I would look ahead. Okay, they're also relevant, let, let me do it anyway. 
and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look at various other, uh, the like, to every uh, part, uh, uh, one of the way to analyze uh, synthesis in many cases is to reduce the problem to graph, and we, we develop a little bit of machinery of evaluating, of uh, studying, uh, mixing properties of bipartite graph, which are biregular, right? That's what we developed in the previous weeks. So let's look at them. They are, they, are, uh, they are relevant. And here, the problems are not always completely trivial. Uh, they, let's look first at B13. So one-dimensional spaces versus <coughs> three-dimensional spaces. So, so uh, let's study these two graphs. Now, in this case, the graphs are, is a bipartite regular graph. The degree is the same. Right? And that's not difficult to compute. The number of points we have here, this is the one dimensional spaces. We have cube to the 4 minus 1 divided by q minus 1, what we call n a 4 over 1 cube. This is the number of subspaces, right? And here we have the three-dimensional, which is by symmetry, it's the same thing. It's 4 over 3, but it's exactly the same size. And the question is, what's the degree from here to here? It's, it's really the question, how many, given a one-dimensional space in the four-dimensional space, how many three-dimensional space contain it? But given a one-dimensional space, the number of three-dimensional spaces containing it is exactly as the number of two-dimensional spaces in a three-dimensional space, because we can look at the quotient. So the degree here is exactly what we call three over three over two, which is really three over one. Q, okay, the number of two-dimensional spaces here. And here it will be the number of one dimensional, so it's, it's exactly the same. And now, if you want to look at the matrix, if A is the adjacency matrix of this graph B13, then B13, then let's uh, so we think of it as Z, it's a bipartite, so there is nothing here, nothing here, and here we have some uh, matrix B, and here we have some matrix BT, right? That's exactly the kind of thing we did last time. And then here we see that, okay, so A squared is B, BT, here is BT, B, 0, 0, and we want to compute the eigenvalues. Now, the eigenvalues of a, a okay, so let's see now what is BBT, so, or, or, or BTB, it doesn't matter. So uh, we said that this is the A square is the adjacency matrix of the graph on the same vertices, representing going by paths of length 2. So I go from a vertex to some vertex and go to a, 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 some a, a other vertex. It can be maybe going back. And going back will be done in, in, a, in this number, 3 over 2 or 3 over 1 q times a identity. Plus, now let's see in how many ways I can go from one to another. So if I have a subspace, W1, and here I have W1 prime, both of them are of dimension one. So they are contained in some two-dimensional space here, a unique one which contains both of them. And the number of parts I have here is exactly the number of three-dimensional spaces containing these, this specific two-dimensional space. Right, is it clear? I want to ask myself in how many ways I can go from a one-dimensional space to a three-dimensional space and come back to a one-dimensional space. So this is really going from a one-dimensional space 
to some three-dimensional space containing W1 and also containing W1 prime. And they are different than each other, which means that, uh, th that this three-dimensional space must contain the two-dimensional space spanned by this one and this one. Okay? So, so given this and this, it gives me some vector space of, of dimension two here. Let's call it U. And the question is, how many three-dimensional spaces containing it? And that's very easy. This is exactly Q plus one. Because we are inside a, a, a we are inside a Q, a, a four-dimensional space. So the, the number of three-dimensional spaces containing a given two-dimensional space inside the four-dimensional space is exactly q plus one. Is it clear? I mean, these are easy considerations. Some of you, you have to do it yourself uh, uh, once in a lifetime, somehow to get used to that. So this will be plus q plus one j, uh, j minus i, where j is the all i uh, formula, right? So now let's do this uh, computation once again. We did this kind of computation last time, but let's do it again to see what the numbers are coming here. So this is uh, so this is equal. So big BT is equal to Q to the uh, oh why yeah Q to the so this is Q Q minus one divided by Q minus one times dt. Uh, okay, maybe let's hide it better. As q squared plus q plus one times the identity plus q minus i a q minus a q plus one j minus i. So we take the j minus i there. So we are getting q squared i plus u plus 1j, and now you remember we said, okay, so it means, let's see how we act. So j acts as zero with, with the composed space. Um, see, this is like, uh, uh, PVT is like looking on one side. I'm just looking on, on, uh, on this side, right? BTB will be starting from here, but the eigenvalues will be just the same. Well, anyway, we know this is a linear algebra exercise which I showed you or gave you as an exercise in one of the, the, the lectures before that BBT and BTB always have the same eigenvalues. Maybe uh, they are different by zeros. Well, in this case, I think they are even not different because this is a, a, both of them are of the same size. If they are not of the same size, then there might be some zeros in one of them which not in the other. So, Okay, so what we have here now, um, so we have functions on that side of the graph which sum up to zero. The function which sum up to zero, the orthogonal complement of the constant, are vanish by j, right? j is zero on these functions. So, so that's, so basically what we know that on, on, on that space in which j vanish, only this acts as q squared. So the eigenvalues, most of the eigenvalues of a squared will be q squared, which means that the eigenvalues of a will be, many of them will be plus or minus q. Because q squared will be an eigenvalue of j. Right? I'm doing it now faster than last time. I don't want to do in each computation, so all the details. Is it clear? But start with it's not clear. And now, what would be the largest eigenvalue? We can guess. What should be the largest eigenvalue? Exactly the degree. Right? But let's just let's see. Let's be on the safe side and, and let's see that indeed that's what we get. Because you see, the la on constant functions, this is like this is what we get on functions which sum up to zero. On the constant function, we get from here q squared plus q plus one. The, the size of A, the size of J, right? If you take a constant function and you multiply it by, by, the, by 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 
and you take 1, 1, 1. What you get is exactly, as an eigenvalue, the size of, of j. j. The size of j here is the size of this side of the graph, which is q to the 4 minus 1 divided by q minus 1. So this is equal q squared plus q plus 1 q to the 4 minus 1 divided by q minus 1. And what, 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 what's, what, what is the outcome? What should be the result? Don't compute. You should know. q squared plus q plus 1. It's q squared plus q plus 1 squared. Because, because this should be an eigenvalue not of a, but of a squared. Right? As an eigenvalue of a, I'm going to get the degree. But as an eigenvalue of a squared, I'm going to get the degree squared. Right? So this should be checked. At least regarding the degrees, it sounds correct, but uh, you should hope that this is correct. I'll check it. But uh, I won't do it now. <laughs> Better than it, to be on the same side. Okay, so let's uh, uh, but let's do the, the, the more interesting and slightly more difficult case just to show you uh, what happened uh, when the, uh, because so far we, we didn't see really and, and I have a point that I want to do one more example in details because I want to to uh, I had a very nice success last time I gave you a good exercise and three, three of you answered me uh, two of them. I only last night and this morning, so I didn't have time to read it, but uh, the one who, who, who sent me the first and I and uh, supposed to, yeah, but you will present it uh, soon. And so I'll give you a more difficult exercise now today, but let me first point out uh, 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 something which is, which is, uh, um, let me do one computation. <coughs> okay, and this is the G12. Okay, so now G12, a uh, B, oh, G, uh, uh, okay, my notes, I call it uh, G12, okay, let's say B12. So this is the one dimensional against the two dimensional. Now, there are many more two-dimensional spaces than one-dimensional spaces. So this time is the first time that we see uh, a, an interesting example of a bipartite graph, which is biregular, but really biregular, like the degrees are different. So let's see how many we have here. That's we already computed. The number of them is 4 over 1 cube, which is approximately q cube. And here we have 4 over 2 q. Now, what is 4 over 2? That just, uh, I don't remember if we did it last time or not, but think about it. How many subspaces you have a dimension 2? So you choose, you, you have for the first, uh, you take a basis for such a, a vector space. So for the first vector, you have q to the 4 minus 1 possibilities. For the second basis element, you, you have q to the 4 minus q. And now, and this will give you all the base, all the independent sets of, of size 2. But many of them define the same, the same vector space of dimension 2. How many vector spaces of dimension 2, uh, uh, sorry, given a vector space of dimension 2, how many bases it has? I have to, I have to, I have to divide this by q squared minus 1 by q squared minus q. Now this is not difficult to compute. It's q squared plus 1. The q goes out, the q goes out, and we get here q to the q minus 1 divided by q minus 1. So this is q squared plus 1 times q squared plus q plus 1. So this is approximately q default. So we see uh, q squared plus 1 times q squared plus q plus 1. 
So you see that this is an unbalance because this is something of order approximately q cube and this is something of order approximately q to the four. Now let's see what is the degrees here and what, what, what the degrees in this side. So the degree here is given a vector space of dimension one, how many vector spaces it has of dimension, eh, sorry, how many vector spaces of dimension two containing are there which contains that one? It contained it, all right? The, the, this is the degree. The degree, how many two-dimensional spaces we have which contain a given W of, of dimension one. So, so this is exactly as the number of one-dimensional spaces of the quotient. So this is the degree is 3 over 1 Q, which is approximately Q cubed. And on the other end, given on the other end, given a two-dimensional space, how many one-dimensional space are containing in it is exactly q plus one. Okay, and that's okay. That's more or less what we expect because we, we, what should happen is that the number of vertices on this side <coughs> times the degree. What? The, the, the number of vector space, the number of vertices on, on the left hand side times the degree should be equal to the number of vertices on the right hand side times their degree. So here we have something like q to the fourth times q, this is q to the fifth, and here we have q to the cube times q to the square, also q to the fifth. And in fact, they, they, they must be equal, not just approximately. So if, if, if you want, we can get an identity, really. The identity should, should say that 4 over 1 Q times 3 over 1 Q, which is, the, the, is really equal to 4 over 2 Q times 2 over 1 Q. Must be true. Again, I don't check. But it must be true, right? Really nice, okay, so this is the job. But now let's understand. Now this time, this time it's slightly more interesting story because here we really get that you see that the left hand side is much smaller than it's much smaller than the right hand side. So this time we really have uh, this is the other way. What? The other way. Right, the, uh, uh, so it should be. Yeah. Right, so here we have B and here we have BT. And they are really of different, uh, 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 not square matrices. But the eigenvalues, the eigenvalues of B, B, T are, uh, say, union, whoever you want to be, eigenvalues of BTB. Right. They, they can differ from each other only by, by zeros, and zero is a great eigenvalue. No, it satisfies all the good conditions. It's a very small number, zero. In absolute value, it's still very small. Uh, especially in absolute value. But uh, uh, let's see what are the other eigenvalues. So it's enough to compute just one of them. So let's compute. Uh, OK, so, so let's see. Now, what will be like the going from the left side to the right side and coming back? So here we will go uh, from a one-dimensional to two-dimensional and come back. So that so like the BVT will be uh, the degree, right? Like the number of time to go and come back is the degree here, which is three by one. Q, the identity, and now the question is in how many ways we can go from one dimension to two dimension and, and come back. Ah, that's actually uh, easy. And this is, plus there's a unique way. 
plus j minus i. Ah, okay, good. That's easy, and we, we uh, yeah, but I, I, I have a point I want to show something here. Okay, that's easy. So this is equal, so let's write it down. So this is equal, I'm continuing here. So this is q squared plus q plus 1. Um, i plus j minus i. So this is q squared plus q i plus j. And again, so what are the eigenvalues? The eigenvalues will be the main j vanish on the functions which I always think of vector as function, right? The vector as function on the vertices. So it vanish on the, on the functions which sum up to zero on this side, right? And, so, and the only thing which, which continue to live there is, so the eigenvalues are the square root of this, is the square root of q squared plus q plus minus, and the trivial eigenvalues. What are the trivial eigenvalues? Now, let's see if you remember what we, what we studied last time. What is the trivial eigenvalue now? Plus minus degree. What? Plus minus degree. But what degree? That's ah, degree yes. You already forgot? If we have a, if we have a bipartite, biregular graph, where the degree are k and l, so what is the trivial eigenvalues? Square root of k times l. Very important. Square root of k times l. Right? So it will be square root of k times l. And then plus and minus. So it will be plus and minus. OK, let's, let me put more space here because we need more space. It will be. Eigenvalues will be plus minus square root of what? Let's write precisely. The degree of one side times the degree of the other side. What is the degree of one side? It's 3 over 1. 3 over 1 is q squared plus q plus 1, right? It's the number of subspaces of dimension 1 inside, inside dimension 2. So this is 3 over 1 q. Right? This is the degree from the left hand side times the degree of the of the right hand side. So this is the eigenvalue. And zero will come up. Okay, zero will come up. If it won't come up on that side, on the small side, it's certainly going to come up on the on the other side. Why? Because it must come, right? If you remember the lemma, when I, did I prove it or just gave it as an exercise? What? You didn't prove it. I did prove it. And, and, and from the proof, you can see that, uh, that really there are zeros coming up to the game if the, if the sides are not the same. Somehow you have a map from, from a small space to a bigger space and going back, and things which are not in the image, I think, are going to zero in the kernel or something. So zero is certainly coming to the game. So zero will come up to the game. Anyway, okay, now, so this is, okay, let's see. So this is q cube square root. So this is approximately q to the 3 over 2. And this is approximately q. All right. Now, are these Ramanujan graphs? You remember, I gave the definition of Ramanujan, right? Did I, 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 I define Ramanujan graph in the previous class? I plan to write, did I? You, you didn't discuss yeah. that. What does it mean about Ramanujan in the bi-regular? Right. right, very good. So I, I define Ramanujan graph only for k-regular graph. And for k-regular graph, Ramanujan graph was that the second eigen, that if the largest eigenvalue like the, the, the k regular graph, the largest eigenvalue is k. The second to largest is should be not less than 2 square root of k minus 1. So you might say, well, 
maybe this is that should be the general definition of Ramanujan. Like take the largest eigenvalue and take the square root of it. Okay, my all, all of that. And then if this would be the definition, then these are not Ramanujan. Because if the largest eigenvalue is something like that, the second largest is q. If I take square root of this, I'm getting q to the 3 over 4. And this is big. But this is not the right definition. So let me give, that's an opportunity. I did a computation in some sense in order to enable me to explain you what is the right definition of Ram Ramanujan by part I graph. And this is the preparation for us to the notion of Ramanujan complexes in the higher dimensional case to understand where the notion comes from. I will not prove what I'm saying now, but uh, well, because I didn't really prove also the Lombopana. At some point, maybe we will prove a general Lombopana, which will include all of them. So I don't want to do it in too many uh, special cases. Uh, but uh, so, let, so let me explain. So, so, so we call that K regular graph, say finite K regular graph, say connected, finite, connected, K regular graph is called Ramanujan if every eigenvalue of e to fit always mean of its adjacency matrix satisfied lambda either plus or minus k or lambda is at most 2 square root of k minus 1. Where did this number 2 square root of k minus 1 come from? Uh, so such, uh, let's call it x. Such x is covered by the, the, the you, in the sense of algebraic topology, the universal covering of x is covered by the k regular tree t k, which is an in this is an infinite tree such that the degree of every vertex is exactly k. And you know, it goes forever. And this is the universal cover space of a k regular tree. Now, what is A? What is the adjacency matrix of, of the tree? So we, we can really write x as tk divided by gamma where gamma is really pi 1 of x, the fundamental group of x acting on tk, right? I hope everyone is familiar with basic algebraic topology, right? That's the, that's the kind of thing. If you have a topological space, you can talk about its universal cover. In this case, universal cover is exactly <coughs> and, and now here one can really beat it by hands. You don't need fancy algebraic topology, you can really kind of define it by elementary means somehow to show what to, to talk about that. But now, and now I want, but here's the point. Look at the operator A from L2 of TK to L2 of TK, which defines by, so, so L2 of TK means functions L2, on the vertices. So these are functions, like complex functions, such that the sum over the vertices square is, is finite. Right? So this is an oper this is a, 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 in, in, in this, this is like an operator between two Hilbert uh, uh, from an Hilbert space to itself. And I can talk about its spectrum. And the spectrum of this operator so this is a non-trivial exercise. I mean, you have to know a little bit about the theory. One can do it combinatorially after one understands the meaning of this, this. But at this point, I don't want 
uh, to worry about that. I mean, I'm just telling you this as a story in order that you will understand why I'm going to define differently than you expect the Ramanujan for by part, right? The spectrum of this is minus 2 square root of k minus 1, the 2 square root of k minus 1. You normalize? What? You normalize the... No, I didn't normalize. I mean, I could, but I didn't, so let's not normalize. This is the spectrum. So, now, okay, this is the spectrum of this. Okay. Now, what is now the definition of Ramanujan graph? Basically, the way you should really think about the definition of Ramanujan graph is in the following way. We have the universal tree. The universal tree is kind of the ideal object which covers all the k regular, all the finite k regular graph. And in some sense, well, you, you, all, you all know now that the uh, expander, that, 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 that bounding the spectrum is also related to expander in some sense that we can make precise is that the, the, the infinite tree is the best expander. Like if you take a subset of it, a finite subset, and you look at its boundary, it's expand in the best way somehow. But we cannot implement the tree in, in the real world. So if we take, if we want to implement in the real world as a k-regular graph, like there are two trivial eigenvalues, k and mi minus k, which are kind of enforced on us. The k is always enforced on us, it's always. And minus k depends if it bipartite or not. So in some sense, these are the trivial eigenvalues. And one really to, to have to understand in the general situation, what does it mean, the trivial eigenvalues? But they are kind of trivial eigenvalues. And what we want is that all the other eigenvalues, the non-trivial eigenvalues, will be in the, in the spectrum of the infinite tree. That's what we ask, right? The definition of Ramanujan says that either we are talking about the two trivial eigenvalues, and if not, you are in the spectrum of the universal cover. And this is the correct definition of what does it mean for a graph to be Ramanujan. Now, why I say that this is the correct definition? Because last time I also presented to you a Lombopana theorem. You remember a Lombopana theorem? A Lombopana theorem told us that if you want to bound the eigenvalues of k regular graphs, of an infinite family of k regular graphs, you want to be able to do it better than this 2 square of k minus 1 for an infinite family. I stress the point, you remember, that for one graph it might be possible. For example, we saw such a graph. What was the graph? This is the complete one. What? Complete. Complete. The complete graph, or, or better and more interesting, the line, we did some computation, right? The line versus points of the projective plane, remember, the largest eigenvalue was q plus 1, and the, and the others were square root of q, which means that they are less than 2 square root of q. Right? If the degree is k is equal to q plus 1, then, this, then I should bound by 2 square root of Q. Now, this is not a contradiction. I stress that point. This is not a contradiction to the Alombo-Pana theorem. Why? Because Alombo-Pana theorem is about infinite family of K regular graphs for the same K. Is it clear? Now, what would be the definition for, what would be the, def the definition of a Ramanujan graph for, a, for definition? Uh, or maybe first we need, there would be a definition plus a lemma immediately. Definition if x is a, any finite graph, not necessarily regular, and t it's universal cover. It's also a tree. It 
that's easy to see that they, they, you know, it would be a graph, but a graph which is simply connected is a tree because there are no loops, right? If there are, if there are loops, it's not simply connected, right? The universal curve should be simply connected and it should be connected and this really means a tree. Uh, and then we can talk about, as then a X is called Ramanujan if uh, all eigenvalues of X are either in I am either trivial, so I have, to, I have to explain in a minute what does it mean a trivial, or in the spectrum of the adjacency operator of T. This is the right definition. Why? Because there is an Alombopana theorem. Alombopana here, well, this is actually a result of uh, Yossi Greenberg. In this case, it's really a theorem of Greenberg. Unfortunately, it's never been, well, actually, in this case, it doesn't matter, but published in his thesis here at the university 20 years ago in Hebrew, never appeared in the literature. But nowadays, in the literature, there are more general results than that. So it's already in the literature. And, uh, different way, but Gilbert was the one who, 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 who proved this version. Um, and this is that uh, uh, this is the best bound you can op, I, I write it in, a little bit informally, you can op for an infinite family covered by T. So it's like what would be the analog of K regular graph that we talked before? An analog of K regular graph that we talked before will be all graphs covered by the same tree, T. In the case, if this tree is the K regular tree, then the graph, the, 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 the finite graphs covered by it is exactly the family of, K, of all K regular graphs. Now I have any tree. Then I look at all the, all the, uh, all the finite graphs covered by it, and they have two trivial eigenvalues. Now, and all the, a, a possible trivial eigenvalues, all, and all the others, well, and, and sorry, and we call it Ramanujan if the others are in the spectrum of the cut well, And I said you cannot, you cannot get a better bound than that, than that bound. Now, in general, what is the trivial eigenvalue? In general, the trivial eigenvalue is the, the so-called Ferron four values. You take the, the adjacency value, you take the Ferron four values eigenvalue, and, and, and it can appear, and its minus can appear. That's a similar story. So if you know this little theory of minus, is fine. If not, I don't want to spend time on it. But I want to talk about the specific. Uh, okay. The truth is that I'm a little bit. I think there is a little point if somebody wants to walk out a little thesis about that and or, or, or check this. There is a slightly in the literature there is slightly two versions of the definition of Ramanujan, which not clear to me that they're equivalent. You can talk about the spectrum of the, that every, uh, every eigenvalue downstairs is inside the spectrum upstairs of the, of the tree. That's one way to say it. Another way to say it, that every eigenvalue, now what is the norm of such an operator? The norm of an F operator A is the is is the is the top of the spectrum. Uh, the norm of A is is this two squared k minus one. But not but, uh, but usually in the literature we say that every eigenvalue is either the trivial one or it's less or equal the norm of A. But I don't think and I don't know that 
the, the, for every tree, the spectrum is continuous path. It's really like an interval. What happens, and I think there are cases, even in the bike regular, that there is some, some that, the, that the spectrum is, is like, is a union of two intervals. Right? So you can give two, two different definitions of Ramanujan. One is that all eigenvalues are bounded by the, the norm of the, of the HSC matrix, of the HSC operator on L2 of the tree. Or you can say that you are really inside the spectrum, which is, would be a stronger property. Okay? So, now let's talk about, about uh, now let's, let's, let's now T be TKL. If you take TKL as your bipartite, uh, as your infinitary, then TKL, the norm of the operator of TKL is equal to square root of k minus 1 plus square root of l minus 1. Which of course, if k equal l, we are getting the old results. By the way, what is TKL? You understand, TKL is, is, the, is the kind of graph that, that uh, is, is the tree that the degree here is 3, and now let's say that the degree next is 4. And then, and then again, now it will be 3, and the next level will be 4. It's like, it's a, it's a bipartite. It's a bipartite 3 that the degrees are k and l, k and l, k and l, k and l, right? Now, so what is the definition? Okay, so now, when I... If, to be honest, I, I, I don't quite remember because I, I, it, it came to me only now when I, when I was doing it. But I think that the spectrum of these three is not continuous. Shachar, you remember? What the spectrum? I'm sure that we looked at it many years ago. What? It's not connected. So, so, the, so, so in the definition of Ramanujan, you can ask yourself, uh, uh, you can give two different definitions of what, what does it mean for a bi-regular graph to be Ramanujan. Right? You can claim that the, all the eigenvalues are bounded by this number, or they are really in the spectrum. And I'm not sure if this is different. Anyway, what I want to say, that what we found now, so, so all this was kind of a long, long, long remark, in order to explain that what we discover now, okay, now let's go after all this big story, let's go to the example we computed. And I claim that this is Ramanujan. Why? So you see, before that we thought that maybe it's not Ramanujan because the largest degree is q to the 3 over 2, the second one is q, and it's not square root of it. But being Ramanujan for a biregular graph, being Ramanujan for a biregular graph should be less than this number. So, so now I claim that this B12 is Ramanujan. Okay, let's say why. Okay, all this was in order to make this claim. Why this is Ramanujan? So let's, let's recall. What was K in this case? In this case, K, it's still written there, I hope. Right? It was like, 3 over q, and 3 over, 3 over 1 q, which is approximately q q, right? And n, a q squared. And n, n, n written there. There's what? The product. Say eigenvalue plus minus the square root of k times l. Ah, here, here they are, right. Right. Okay, so what we need, okay, so yeah, so this is k and this is l, right? So k minus 1, so what we need, we need that the eigenvalues will be less than square root of q 
square plus q plus square root of u. That's what we need in order to check if b12 is Ramanujan or not. And the eigenvalues are what? They are square root of this, so this is less than that, and z1. So this is fine. And this is the trivial eigenvalue. So they are Ramanujan. Okay? And, and the question I want to raise to you, and the exercise, but this is exercise which I, I don't know to solve myself. And I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's a open problem for all the people not to do. But I have the feeling that if we will look, so fix n, and look at the graph Bij, namely i dimensional spaces versus j, let's say i less than j versus j dimensional. It would be nice to know that they are all Ramanujan. So one should, now we understand what we mean here by Ramanujan. It's taking the degree. To compute the degree, the, the order of the, the degrees is not difficult. To compute the eigenvalues is slightly more difficult story. I mean, like, I, I more or less cover all the trivial cases. Now, well, if i is 1 and j is something, then it's not so difficult. If I think if i or j, I'll give you an int, what I, oh, maybe I shouldn't give you an int. Maybe, I mean, I, what I think should be done here, uh, but maybe, no, maybe I should, well, uh, uh, maybe I'll, 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 I'll let, 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 let me show you I'll take another few minutes and then we'll take a break and then, and then you will present your proof, okay? Uh, let, let, let me show you that there is some inter... I mean, we need some trivial calculation, but there is some interesting, not so trivial consequences, which I'm not going to push here, but let's look at the following graph, for example. If I ask you directly, then this is, this, I think, a non-trivial exercise, but somehow I think it follows from what we said. Look at the, uh, 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 again, let's look at f cubed the 4, and let's look at two-dimensional versus two-dimensional spaces, but a different graph than what you think. Well, you don't, you don't think, because there is no inclusion. But I want to say I will connect w1 here and w2 here, connect them by line if w1 intersection w2 is empty, is zero. So if you take two dimensional, if you take two dimensional, if you take two, two dimensional subspaces of f cubed the four, there are two possibilities. Either they have trivial intersection, or equivalently they generate the full space, or they have a non-trivial intersection and they generate a three-dimensional space. And I want to take one of the two. And so this is, this is a bipartite. A, not bipartite, sorry. No, no, this is a graph, sorry. I, I, I don't think of it as a bipartite. I, I, uh, just, just, it's not a bipartite, I'm sorry. This is just a graph. Like, this is the space, these are the points, are the two dimensional, and I put a line if they don't intersect. Or you can say, I put a line if they do intersect, it doesn't matter because it's just a complement. What are the eigenvalues of that graph? That's, that's an exercise that you can deduce from what I said before. And this kind of intersect, in, 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 intersect between spaces, you can, you can start to deduce from the kind of computation I made, and they are needed for solving the more general problem that I presented. So I'll try to play uh, with this a bit. I mean, um, even partial results would be interesting to, to uh, Somehow, I have, I have a strong feeling that all of them should be Ramanujan somehow, all, all this type of uh, OK, well, I think I, 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 uh, I talked enough about that. Uh, but uh, 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 after the break, you will present your solution to the fact that this is a chamber, what we call a chamber complex last time, 
and then um, if I have time, I will start uh, to do something. If not, I will do next. Next time, we go more to the health of the material of this course. But, uh, but all this will be valuable for us. So we get used to to take the complex and to compose it to the values by part and graph, etc. Showing you there is such a gallery. Uh, now we'll allow, we'll make the proof more aesthetic if we allow the gallery to be something like this. Uh, we allow uh, trivial subspaces. Okay. And then what we want to prove is that. Uh, uh, well, Alex just reminded us, but I'll say again that uh, every uh, gallery, every, uh, what do we call them? Chambers, every two chambers, V and U are connected. Gallery. Um, so, uh, you said what a gallery was? I remember what a gallery is. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now, um, so we first define what the difference between two galleries is. So, two chambers is, excuse me. <coughs> Uh, so we define uh, define functions d i v u v i dimension of intersection, and let's also define this to be the sum and we also define the metric. sort of a discrete metric, so all we need to show is that we can do one step. We can make, we take two different chambers and you can make the distance a little bit shorter. Okay. So what we want to prove is that um, if uh, B, the distance between V and U is non-zero, then uh, there are uh, two chambers which are sort of neighbors of the original ones. I.e., their intersection is larger than n or equal to n. And And the distance becomes a small. Okay. V prime and U prime are two chambers. Two, yes. In the intersection, you mean number of uh, spaces which coincide with this chambers. Right, yeah. So, but there. This basically means that they're either exactly identical or that um, their intersection is a wall. Okay. Um, so basically, we see that these functions, these di, are increasing or non decreasing. And they go. Right, uh, just what, what, what is it that though? The d u v u is equal to what? The sum between the sum of i, i from 0 to n minus 1, oh. n plus 1, and but, uh, n. Sum, but sum of what? i. Of i, sum of i. Sum from i. You should take it in brackets. Right. Ah, i minus? 
constant a little bit and then it has to increase <coughs> and so we can take uh, pick some uh, vector which is in the intersection here and not in the inter intersection here so pick some w and the address to the intersection Basically, what we do is that we just uh, what we want to do is we add w in the i plus one uh, dimension instead of we replace uh, v i plus one with v i in w. Okay, right there. Uh, I don't understand something. Well, what is v prime intersection? V is greater than equal to what? N. Uh, did I get that wrong? N minus 1? No, N. So we have each one of them has N plus 1 members. You think of flag as including also, also the trivial. Uh, the, 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 the two trivial. Right. That's what you can say. There you meant capital G, I right? There you meant capital G. All the GIs at the time. You really mean that they are neighbors? I don't see where you mean. Here, here you Ah, yeah, it's all, it's all capital right? I forgot. And then W <coughs> is what? Vector? W is. is a vector, yeah. Instead of I replace v i plus one with v i plus one prime, which uh, right here v i plus one prime, which contains um, the i and this vector from the intersection of the higher space. Okay, and similarly I was replace w i plus one with w. U there, right? Ui plus 1, with Ui plus 1 prime, which contains uh, Ui and W. Okay. These are the new. Uh, and then, uh, so then uh, V prime is just. Uh, no, it's just. We uh, have this V0, V1 up to V. I plus one prime, the rest of the moon is unchanged, and u prime is the same. And uh, this basically, what, what this gives us is that the intersections of v i plus one prime and u i plus one prime is one, is a little bit, clo is, a, is one larger than the intersection of v i plus one and u i plus one. Okay, so this is basically the proof of that. Asked what the diameter of the gallery would be, right? That, that is what well, would everyone understood this, uh, this, this point? Well, maybe <coughs> illustrate what you're really doing, like right? taking a simple example like this, in the top or the bottom. Uh, well, I, I 
guess you could say. Well, if, if you had to say v0 to v, let's say v1 would be span some vector e1. So w is, is a vector, I think it is. Maybe it gives a different name. It yeah. looks like a subspace. W is a vector, right? Uh, I, I, I don't know what different names we give alpha. Say. What? You want a different name? Alpha. No, I'm right. To stress, this is a vector. Uh, well, again, I, don't, I mean, I just, I, you know that at a certain stage, you have two things whose intersection is, say, this. This is at stage i, and stage i plus 1, you know that the intersection didn't change. But in stage i plus 2, you know that it did. What you do is you just take a vector from here and you put it here. You change the. What what, what is the prime? I don't understand. What is what is, what is a, a vi plus one prime? Yeah. So I'm saying. <coughs> so <coughs> okay. Maybe I'll do it. Uh, I'll do it slow. Okay. No, slowly and, uh, and carefully. Right? Okay. So. <coughs> I, I already saw the proof and I don't understand you now. So what okay, I'm sorry. So, okay, so... Even more difficult for the other. Okay, so we said that there's an alpha which is in vi plus 2 intersection in vi plus 2 and not in, that, in this intersection. So we pick... So basically we know that... Um, what we know is this, right? Want to uh, so so what I want I want to say now this could be either a, a vector space of dimension i plus one or but dimension i if, if alpha is contained in vi right and same here so I just take and the and the intersection of these two the dimension of the, these intersection is larger than the dimension of this intersection because alpha is also here. So then, what I'm saying is that I can pick, we can pick vi plus 1 prime, vi plus 1 prime uh, subspaces of the dimension i plus 1, such that uh, they are basically here.
done? Any questions or problems? So that uh, <clears throat> the size of a gallery that connects two such chambers. So the bound I can say that it has to be uh, between between twice the difference between them and uh, but I don't I don't know I didn't speak about it in terms of n what is it n is like the what are you you said n hmm? what are you uh, <coughs> the size of the gallery that connects u and v.
So the gallery we construct is we start here, then go to gallery two intersection U two inside gallery two. Then gallery two YouTube inside YouTube uh, and then we get here. Just a second, I'll be all the W2. Then of course I mentioned one, the mass intersection. The W2 and U2, maybe they're equal. If they're equal, then this in, in itself is a guy. The what? Then this is a gallery, yeah. if they are equal. Because these two chambers together are already uh, Ah, these are two chambers in okay. the Then we finish. Okay, okay. Yes. So, okay, you have to say it. Okay. Either or they are already. Yes. Okay, fine. So, we are going to call M equal 3, which is a gallery. And now, assume that. And we have a chamber complex. And now we have two uh, chambers in, in uh, <coughs> S and S1, W1 star, which is W11 inside W12. W1 
and minus 1. So now we have a gallery from this one to this one. I'm confused. You had a special complex. All your spaces were in F, Q to N plus 1. Yes. So the complex was S, N plus 1. So we take each other in S, N plus 1. So A. Yeah. But you wrote it as n. That's the exact same assumption. That's the exact same assumption. So now we take two chambers in the next level. And if we shorten it by one, we get a chamber in the previous one. Uh, and we have to use an edification of the last one with f, q, n. Now, by the induction assumption, we have a gallery that's called C R with C R in S and Q with C zero W one star theta and C R. Here is CR and C0, which 
chose the same one. And that does so. We, with this, we, we see that if the maximum length of a gallery here is some k, then here it would be 2k, so we get 2 k this one. But we can do better, much better than that. We can take, instead of taking w3 to be any arbitrary chamber, this one, we can take a channel that is as close as we can to W1, and then it will be much shorter. The tool? We, we can take a specific, specific W3, and after you can take the first uh, gallery to be of length n minus 1. Just take the intersection. Uh, uh, uh. W3 n minus 1 is Wn yeah. intersection W1 intersection W2. Instead of choosing it completely arbitrary, yeah. you will choose it in what so way? W3 n minus 2 will be Wn minus 1 3 intersection with W1 n minus 1, and so on. Uh -huh. And then this gallery will be a flat exactly n minus 1. So we get that if Vn is the diameter of S and Q, then for S n plus 1 Q, we have n minus 1 for the first gallery, n for the first gallery plus Vn. That's the order of times square. Is it the times square or even as the order of two or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You send me a double proof, right? It's, a, it's uh, another or it's a very similar to one of them. Mm -hmm. But I didn't finish. <laughs> oh, I see. I didn't read them. I just told them. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, we start here and then, uh, next time I will do the